<laughs> well, we're out. We're out exploring. Uh, I don't know where we are exactly, but somewhere. Well, we're the Lucin cutoff is right over there, and we were trying to find our way onto that to see if we couldn't drive out across the Great Salt Lake on it because we heard you can and you can't. <laughs> well, you can. Well, you, you can. can anyway. We're we're trying to figure that out. At any rate, what we actually want to show you guys this week is the progress on the layout mm -hmm. at Garage Mahal. The big 200 square foot backdrop that goes behind the engine shops. Wow! And uh, it's been it's been years coming together, and it's we're with the pandemic and everything. We're putting a lot of time in on things, so uh, we've got it's, of time. It's, it's coming right along. Check this out. Well, it was just a few years ago that we were actually remodeling the whole garage. Oh, what a job! Oh man! But we had Al and Steve build this huge cove. And then unfortunately I got a hold of it and painted this blue gradient on here. And uh, at first I thought it was really neat, but in messing around with it, I realized that I've got the gradient between blue and gray way too high up in the air. And when I started putting in clouds, look at that. Yeah, it looks kind of like there's a bad storm coming. <laughs> it's a mess is what it is. So I just got the blue sky color and painted the whole thing out. So I tested here in Photoshop and uh, I can see that I'm going to need to bring that sky gradient almost all the way down to where the bench work sits. Uh, I also laid in some temporary mountains as you can see just to see where that's going to line up with the gradient. I like doing these things in Photoshop first and now for real. So I painted out that entire uh, gradient with the sky blue color and then started coming back in and adding distant clouds out of a light gray and uh, mixed with some of the sky color to create a new version of the gradient. The original gradient was spray painted but I don't want to do that it'll make a big mess now that we've got a shop full of, uh, of stuff. So this is all being hand painted using a, a paint roller mostly and then a dry painter's pad which I was using to blend with the, the roller. So I lay some color on here with the roller and then I come back with just a dry painter's pad and kind of smear that across the sky blue trying to blend that in and create uh, something of a gradient, something that feels like distant clouds. I tried blending when the blue paint was slightly wet and it actually works best to just go ahead and let the the sky blue completely dry and then come back in with very thin coats of this this white which isn't actually white it's a, a very very light gray it really spoils the effect if I use a pure white so this is actually a light gray keep in mind that all of these colors darken because it's uh, latex and acrylics and they darken as they dry so uh, anyway there it is the completed distant clouds all just painted in uh, principally with the paint roller uh, and now I can come back with brushes and, uh, and enhance this and try to make it look more like detailed clouds. Now if you've watched the videos that we put up by uh, Robbie and, and Bennett and uh, Gil Bennett and a few of these people, they all say uh, you should start with your darker colors and then go lighter and lighter each time you paint into it. I got really carried away here and went way too dark. I'm also painting with a little tiny half inch brush, uh, which isn't working out at all. When you're painting, uh, it works out a lot better to have a, a big, a soft, fluffy brush like this. For one thing, it's a huge wall that I'm trying to paint here, but you also just get a much, much better effect having a, a big uh, and, and somewhat worn out brush. I'm using the, the light gray again here, uh, mixed with a little bit of the sky blue. And because it's a, you know, got kind of a transparent quality to it, you still see the grays coming through, which is exactly what I want. It's just that because I started way too dark, I have to put on a lot more paint than I, I should have had to put on. It's really neat to see uh, how this effect comes to life as you add the light color back over the top of the darker colors, each layer bringing out a little bit more of the cloud detail. 
And then uh, the last coat that I put on here, I will be using actually pure white and a small brush to just go in and, and enhance this stuff. But right now I'm just layering uh, coat after coat of that light gray over the top of, of this and then sort of letting it dry to see just exactly what it is I've got. Well, that's really a neat effect, but I'm wondering how we're going to tie that to the other backdrop. Well, there's our challenge, isn't it? Uh, because over here on the other side, uh, this is where that backdrop hits our existing backdrop. And uh, well, we've both been kind of concerned about how to go about tying all that together so it looks correct. Well, as I was painting the backdrop over here, I began to realize that uh, there's going to be a little bit of an issue joining these two sections together. Yes, unfortunately, we never really have had a plan on how to tie mm -hmm. the whole thing together. Right. So oh, yeah. now is the time to tie <laughs> it is to plan that. I've always advocated for painting the backdrop first. Yes. Yes, because uh, the benchwork gets in the way and then you can't get to anything. But over here in the switching yard, the benchwork is only about, oh, 20 inches wide. So we were able to do the benchwork and the backdrop together. Over here on the big backdrop, we haven't put in any bench work at all so that we can get to it quite easily. Now here what I'm doing is I'm coming back in with the sky blue color. That way I can clean up any sort of ragged edges or brush strokes that I don't like hanging out of the bottom of the clouds or, or wherever. This is a technique that uh, Robbie showed us when he was over here painting. He likes to come back in with the sky color and sort of punch holes in things to uh, give it more detail. Well anyway, after several coats of paint on there, lighter and lighter and lighter, it's making some pretty nice looking clouds. <laughs> it looks just like clouds. Yeah, I feel like we're up in a jet airplane flying over. <laughs> well, with uh, COVID, we can actually sit in the car and uh, pretend we're driving somewhere. Yes, we can sit in the car and go <laughs> Anyway, doesn't this look real? Um, I'm really happy with how this is coming out. I'm still touching up ever so slightly uh, just adding more and more light color, but um, it's, I think it's there. I think it's, it, it's looking nice. Yeah, I'm pretty happy at this point with what we've got and ready to move on and put in the foreground mountains with the exception of this little area right over here. I put in this kind of dark thunderstorm and I thought it was rather clever when I first put it in. But now it's just jumping out at me as inappropriate, too dark, just not, not right. I, I, so I want to lighten this up using the technique that Steve Stribble showed us, uh, Velascura, where you just take very thinned out color and uh, layer that over the top, very transparent layers. And I put about 12 layers of the light gray and pretty soon, yeah, it starts looking the way I wanted it to. And, uh, and now I'm happy with this, this distant storm. It doesn't feel quite so, uh, so obnoxious and obvious. And I'm ready to move on to the foreground mountains. I'm starting off by putting in these furring strips, one by two furring strips, which will set the mountains out away from the backdrop. But more importantly, it gives me a shelf here on top of the top furring strip to lay in an RGB color changing uh, LED strip uh, so that I can do this interesting uh, sunset effect. I covered this effect on the upper part of the layout when we were talking about backdrop, uh, painting backdrop up there but it uh, gives you a backlight behind your mountains that can function principally as a sunset, but any kind of uh, background lighting effect. I've turned the brightness up here and set it to sort of a blue color to see what that's going to look like. I'm trying to find out if there are any sort of defects in the backdrop that are gonna show up when I light them up this way. And you can see that it does reveal some hot spots over to the right. So I want to design my mountains to take that into account and place my sunset in an area where it will look uh, the best relative to the light hitting the backdrop. And I think that the sunset would look best if I place it over here, kind of to the left, because to me this looks like the most natural sunset color. So that's where I'm going to bring the mountains closest down to the light strip and place my sunset effect. Now I wanted to test how close I want to get to the LED strip for my sunset and how far away I can get and still see the light. So I cut out this piece of foam core 
just to test how close I want to get to the LEDs and how far I want to get from the LEDs. I want to be able to get as close to the LED strip as I can, but I want to make sure you can never actually see the LEDs. So after some time spent on the internet looking at different hills and mountains, I decided that the ridge above Durango, Colorado would be just absolutely perfect. It puts the sunset right where I want it. It makes nice tall mountains over near the hot spots, which will help uh, make those appear to be sunset god rays, as opposed to just warps in the backdrop or something. And never mind, it's Durango, Colorado, so that's incredibly appropriate. Now I tried dimming the room lights to see uh, how the sunset's going to work in different room lights and it seems to be coming right together. Now keep in mind the background is all a photograph and the foreground is just something from Photoshop testing the mountain ridge. Now the sky doesn't look good at all but I haven't put in any kind of foreground lighting. I need to put something in here that will more uniformly light up the backdrop so I get a uniform blue color all the way across and not this pale blue and dark blue and splotchy effect that you see now. But those hot spots look great now. Uh, instead of looking like a warped backdrop or something, they look like sunset god rays coming up from behind the mountains. Exactly what I was after. So now I'm ready to permanently install the LED strip. Uh, if you know anything about these LED strips, you can cut them down to size. You can cut them anywhere you see these bands of copper here. And in fact, you can hook power up at those points too. But I just took a pair of scissors and snipped right through here and then wired from the other end, connecting that to my power supply and uh, light controller. The power supply and light controller are mounted well under the bench work where I'll be able to get to them quite easily. The round unit over here is a Bluetooth controller that works uh, from an app on my phone and that's how I'm running all of the lights for the layout right now. This is the app over here and allows me to set different colors and brightnesses. Someday I may change this over to run on Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth, but for now it's working great and I'm quite happy with it. But as a good general rule, you want to make sure that all of your wiring is set up in a way that you can easily get to it. Okay, time to build the mountain ridge for real and not just uh, in Photoshop. So let's start over here. This will be my first 4x8 sheet of masonite. I need to copy that ridge line onto the masonite and then cut that out. So I'm just sort of visualizing here how that's going to fit on top of the masonite. And then I went through with a sharpie and marked out the ridge line and then took a saber saw and cut that out. Instant mountains. Once I had my masonite cut out, I mounted that to my furring strips, checking to make sure it lines up with my sunset and my clouds exactly the way I had that visualized. I actually found that I had to shift this slightly to the right uh, to get the exact sunset effect with the god rays exactly the way I wanted it to be. These things never quite work out the way you anticipated, but I shifted it about four inches to the right and then everything looks just spectacular. So again, using Photoshop, I've mapped my image on top of the masonite to make sure that that's going to look okay when I paint that on there. And boy, it looks great. I'm, I'm thrilled. I couldn't be more tickled if I had a feather in my nose. So I went ahead and cut out the rest of my ridge line out of another sheet of masonite. I was able to do all of this with just two sheets of masonite by planning carefully. And there it is, the whole mountain range ready for paint. That's really going to be a challenge. <laughs> no kidding, but uh, uh, challenge and fun is all the same thing when you get right down to it, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, it looks great with the sunset effect, and uh, overall, I, I couldn't be more tickled. I, I feel like we're in a John Ford movie. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Durango. And it may be our only chance to get to Durango this year. So progress is coming right along on the backdrop. It is. It's, it's almost ready for paint. Mm. I just have to do a little prep on the masonite. Now I'm going to put down some primer because I learned my lesson the hard way. Definitely want to put down a gray primer and, and that'll help us figure out if we need to do any more filling or sanding or anything like that. And then color. Yes. And that'll be uh, an upcoming show as we paint the cliffs above Durango, Colorado onto the backdrop and yes. at that point we can proceed with bench work and yes. building an engine shop and that'll be really neat. <laughs>
Anyway, if you uh, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, here comes the blue opportunity. Are we ready for it? Zoink! Right there is a blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with some Tuesday foolishness. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>